I'm excited. This is week six, week six of the a study in Romans. I want you to come to understand what this is all about. I want you to realize what God has commissioned me to do, and that is to teach the people that come in contact with this, this podcast, with this ministry, to teach them who God says they are. We just finished a study that started months ago, 10 months ago, 11 months ago now. We started in June 21st of 2021 on an in him scripture study, and we went through that entire study, 190-some-odd scriptures, and feeding people and showing them what God says they are, who God says they are. See, the majority of this world, the majority of the church, don't know the privilege of what of who God says they are. They don't realize who God has made them to be through Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. And if they, they, if you can come to understand who you are in Jesus Christ, it will change you. It'll set you free from all the the religious junk. That, that you've dealt with your entire life. This is something that, that has really, really excited me, and, and it's put me on a path to, to, to show everybody that I can that, listen, God cares for you. He loves you, and he wants you to know who he has made you to be through Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, not through your, your goodness, not through anything that you've done other than accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's what, that's what got you to, to be able to stand in these truths that, that this study is talking about. Like I said, this is the second study. Uh, uh, we started in the In Him Scripture study on, on, on June 21st of 2021. It went to March 30th. We started this study in Romans in March 30th. And I want you to get a hold of what God is, is saying to his people, that he has done a whole lot. Jesus came and, and, and died a sinner's death on the cross, innocent of all charges, so that you and I could walk free, could walk free and stand in the righteousness that he has given us through him being Lord and Savior of our lives. Go to go back to June twenty first and go through this scripture study with us. June twenty first of two thousand and twenty one. Go through this entire study, cause I promise you it'll change your life like it's never been changed before. I am thrilled to be able to bring you these prayers every time I do this podcast during the, during the week. I thank God that he has given us his word to stand in. And Paul Paul told the Ephesians he wanted them to see and understand the love that God had for them. And that's the reason I do these, these prayers, because I want the world to see and understand just how good God is, just how much he loves them, just how much he cares for them. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere. I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere, 
everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power, at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that I see more and more of his love every day of my life, and it all comes through his word. Oh, I thank God for his word the strength that it brings, and, and the, the confidence that he gives me through his word every day. And that is my prayer today for the world that we live in, that every person on the face of this planet would come to understand and know just how much God loves them, just how much God's for them, and just how much God wants to see them succeed in this world so they can be a light and a vessel that he can use. Let's see what God's Word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your Word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory, Lord. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in this podcast, in this ministry, in my life, in the people's lives that are listening to this podcast. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for all you're doing, all you have done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. We're still in uh, Romans 4, and we want to go down to Rome, uh, Romans 4 and 20 and read. Let's, re- let's, let's start uh, Romans 4 and 20. This is the King James Version. It says, He staggered not at the, promises of, at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. That this is still talking about Abraham. You got to understand something. Abraham, the I think the reason that that uh, there's so much about him in this in this book is because Abraham stepped out literally, not seeing or knowing anything other than what he had been told. And he walked out into the into the world and said, God, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Now, we can look back at our lives, and there's not a living person on this, wor- on this planet that has, does not have many, many, many resources to build their faith. But but this verse is, is talking about Abraham. And, and Paul said it. He said he staggered not at the promise of God. But through faith, let me read, 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 read it again. It says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. In other words, he stood his ground. He stood up and said, I'm going to follow you. He didn't stutter, he didn't stammer, he didn't stagger at at what God was telling him to do. And this took years. I want you to understand something today. God is going to do just exactly, just exactly what he says he will do. He will stand behind you 100%. I want to go to a scripture that I have used and used and, and just over over uh, the years have just there's no telling how many times that I have looked and read and and studied this scripture and gave it to the people that listen to this podcast 
and it's Numbers 23, 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Is that not, is that just basically just telling us, look, stand, let, stand on God's word, he'll do what he says. That's what, that's what, this is, this is, I'm so adamant on telling people to take this word and stand in it. Believe it and stand in it. Know without a shadow of a doubt that God will do what he says. Abraham didn't have near the 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 uh the information and the 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 words to take and 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 stand on. He had God's word and that was it. We have examples of God, how faithful God is. We have, we have thousands probably that you can, you can look up and go to studying the faithfulness of God and, and how God will back, back, uh, his word up. And you can find thousands of examples where God done exactly what he said he was going to do. And, and literally people that, uh, maybe not you know, but people that you know that know people. They said, you know, God, you know, God brought them out. I'm, I'm a, I'm an example of how God's word is true above all opinion, and He's faithful to back it up. I mean, what I went through was could have been fatal, and and the devil wanted more than anything for it to be fatal. For me, for me to leave this world and 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 never be seen again. But the fact of the matter is, God had bigger plans. He knew what was coming long before I did, and He watched after me. But Abraham, he, even though he didn't have much to go on, I'm, I'm I'm saying he didn't have much to go on. He had a lot to go on. He had God's word. But to a, to a carnal man, you you look at something and you, and, and they the carnal carnality will cause you to stagger every time. And Abraham wasn't that carnal man. He wasn't. He didn't stagger one bit. When God said go, he went. Whatever he told him to do, he done it. Uh, yeah, did he, did he make mistakes? Absolutely, we all do. But the fa- but the fact of the matter is, he stood on what God told him, and 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 ran with it. And and he's he's known through history to be the one that believed God. I want to encourage you today. If you do a- anything in your life. I'm talking about if you purpose to do anything in your life, purpose to do this one thing, and that is to believe God. Stand, have faith in God and stand on what he has said. It, you'll never fail. You'll, you will never fail believing what God has said. I want you to understand this. I want you to stand in this. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that God is for you. He He is for you, and He will, He will back up what He says. But you've got to, you've got to come to that conclusion on your own. You've got to come to that conclusion in a, at a place where you know you you can't look around and see any examples. You you can't you know that you say, well, what do you mean? Well, you could be in a position. You could be in a position that money can't help you, people can't help you. The only thing that that can help you is God and his faithfulness. That's it. I'm telling you, this world is quickly coming to a place that the only thing, the the only thing that they're going to be able to stand on is what God is doing. 
And that that I'm telling you, the the financial uh, uh, economy, the 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 way we operate could crumble tomorrow. The the food supply could be gone tomorrow. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you don't, if you don't determine in your heart to, that you're going to stand on God and what He has said, you're. I'm telling you, uh, this world is going to find itself in a place one of these days that it has nowhere else to turn. And I'm, I, I want to, I want to urge you that. To, to take this time to, to study and find out what God says about you, about you, and, and, and be, become strong in what He has said, not what this world is saying. We, 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 we get so much misinformation, so much distraction out, out of the world today you know, I use my phone a lot. I use it for studying a lot. Anytime I need to find something in the Bible, I, nine times out of ten, I'm going to go to my phone my phone to, do, to use it. But I'm going to tell you something. That is, that phone, these phones that we're dealing with on a daily basis are the single most distracting, the single biggest distraction in world history. I'm telling you that phone can take, can take your whole day away from you before you know it, and you've spent the whole day staring at a screen looking at things that just does not mean a hill of beans to nothing, just, just a complete distraction. Now, if you use that phone the way I do a lot of times, you can get a lot out of it. I use my iPad to study more than I do my phone. But you've got to you got to uh, make sure that you're not being distracted from from all the things that's going on around you. But I want to encourage you. You Abraham was in a place that he didn't stagger at anything God said. And, and I want to encourage you to do the same thing. I want to encourage you to to find a place, find a time, give yourself, give yourself a, a, a set amount of time a day to take his word and consume it like a good meal and and become strong in what he has said, not what I have said. Not what any other preacher has said, but what thus saith the Word of God. God wants to be there for you. He has went to a lot of trouble to write this book. And the, the, this, this book is the most published book in world history. It's been published or been printed more than any other book. They're everywhere. You can find them. You can find a lot of them that are free. All you've got to do is get in it and ask God to teach you. You say, "Why well, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know the Bible. I don't know how to do that." Ask the Holy Spirit. Ask Him. If you're born again, you have the same Holy Spirit that I do. You have the same Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, God's Spirit, and He will guide you and direct you in every aspect of your life. Ask Him to. Abraham didn't stagger, and I'm telling you, there's a place in your life that you can become, that, that you don't stagger. Get there, and you're going to get there through studying and lifting God's Word up and putting it in your heart and coming to a place to, that you say, I ain't, I ain't going to stagger another day. I'm going to believe God's Word and stand on God's Word. Do that today. Now, I want to ask you a question. Are you born again? You know, a lot of times this, 
if you're listening to this podcast, you'll hear me say things that, that I'm talking to born-again people. This is a teaching podcast. But I, I always want to give everybody an opportunity to be born again. Because when we come to a place in our lives that we realize, that we realize without God in our life, you're, you know, this is a lost cause. And I don't want you to ever end up realizing that. I want you to be born again. I want you to, I want you to give God your heart and your life and stand in what he has said about you. You know, Romans 10 and 9 sums it up. It says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. For you to confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Won't you do that today? There's millions that believe in Jesus, believe what he done, but they've never accepted him. They've never invited him into their heart and confessed him as Lord. Do that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him. Change your life forever. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. I want to hear what God is, is, is needed to be doing in your life. I want to hear what you're desiring for him to do. I want to send you scriptures that you can stand on and we can agree on that God's got an answer for your prayer. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. If you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Oh, I thank God I thank God for faithful partners that do just that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into his kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.